Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. I'm Nancy Zeman. This program is the first of a three-part series called Pillows 101. You've heard of History 101 or English Lit 101 in a college class schedule. Well, Pillows 101 isn't a likely class to take in school. It is a great place to start to learn to sew. Throughout this series, we'll show you five decorating themes and the types of easy pillows that can be made to accent your home. This kid's room setting features a variety of interesting pillow shapes, all made with squares and rectangles. I'll start with the easiest of pillows and then show you how that simple shape can take on interesting design changes. So if you're a beginner or a self-proclaimed fabricaholic, you'll find many new ideas next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy TV's how-to sewing program with Nancy Zeman is brought to you by Foff, the largest European producer of sewing machines. Foff's creative line of sewing machines and hobby lock sergers are simply the best. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears for home, classroom, and industry. Ginger scissors and shears are the choice of professionals. Oxmoor House, the publisher of fine sewing, quilting, and craft books, including Nancy's books and the Sew for Fun collection, So Easy, So Now. Madeira Thread from Germany with superior quality and smart packaging to make it a sensational value, preferred by home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And by Nancy's Notions Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and unique hard-to-find sewing notions and supplies. To begin the class on Pillows 101, I'm going to give you the basic supply list. For those of you who are beginners, this is a simple selection to pick up. Tape measure and measuring tools are really needed when working with a lot of squares and rectangles. Scissors at your sewing machine is a type of nippers, a good scissors to cut the fabric, marking tools like marking pencil or pen, and pins. Get your iron out of your closet and you'll be ready to do some sewing. When developing this program and thinking about pillows and all the different sizes of pillow forms, we kind of scratched our heads. How are we going to give you these measurements? Well, we have a simple guideline. Whether you're working with a 12-inch pillow form or a 22-inch pillow form, you're going to work with the pattern in the same way. Start with a piece of paper, a uh, square, excuse me. The measurement is the pillow form, let's say it's 14-inch pillow form, and add an inch and a half. This happens to be 15 and a half inches. To any pillow form measurement, add an inch and a half for your basic square of pattern paper. Fold the pattern paper in half meeting the cut edges, crease, and cut along the fold. You're going to have two pattern pieces. One of the pieces will be placed on the fold of the fabric. Now for pillow forms that are 16 inches or less, basically you need half of a yard of fabric or half a yard of fabric. This is a 45 inch fabric. If you have a pillow form more than 16 inches square, you'll need double the length of your square. The other half of the piece of paper is going to be for the closure side. We have a very plain closure side right here that has been closed with hook and loop tape. You may like to close it with buttons or snaps. I'll show you those options a little bit later, but you need extra fabric to go on the underside. Cut a rectangle of fabric that is four and a half inches wide by the length of your square. We have two different colors of tissue paper to show. You have the lines of the pattern parallel to the cut edges of the fabric or the finished edges of the fabric. Pin around the edges and cut. Very simple cutting instructions. We have two layers of fabric, as you might guess, so you have enough for the top and the backing. Now, after doing the cutting, you need to do some marking. And I have these cut pieces. I'm going to place them on top of my patterns just to show you how they would be cut. Here's the top piece piece that's very plain. We had it placed on the fold. We need to put a little nip, a quarter of an inch clip, right at the fold that marks the center, both at the top and the bottom. On the closure side, we have two pieces. We cut double layers. And we need to do some markings. These markings are important to know how to fold the fabric. We're going to place one marking at the intersection where the facing meets the pattern, at, that's at four and a half inches, and a second one at three inches. And I have already nipped these pieces at the three inch and the four and a half inch, just little quarter of an inch clips. First we're going to work with that closure side, the back of the pattern, or the pillow I should say. Interfacing is a real important thing, or a little extra support. And at that three inch nip marking, right at this area, we're going to place fusible or sewn interfacing. Interfacing gives support, and on the back side of this, we just cut a strip that's three inches wide and cut.
cover it and fuse. Follow the instructions that come with the interfacing. I'm kind of doing a little quicker job possibly than I need to do, but you fuse it into place to give some support for those buttons or for the closure area. Next, fold under this facing area along that three inch nip at the top and bottom and press. You'll do this on both sides of the pillow closure half. Now if this edge is very ravelly prone, you may want to zigzag this edge or slightly turn it under by just an eighth of an inch and stitch so that it's finished very neatly. Now we're just about ready to stack the closure pieces together. You'd have interfacing on both pieces and to know how to line these up, find the inch or the four and a half inch nip and stack one piece on top of the other and pin. Then you'll have a perfect square just the way the original square pattern piece turned out. Now we're ready to add some closures to this area. I told you there were a couple of ways of looking at this. We initially looked at the hook and loop tape by about six to ten inches of tape and just straight stitch it to the underside of the overlap and then the underlay side so that the pieces are lining up. Just simple straight stitches. Buttons are an interesting closure. If you're new to sewing, perhaps you may want to do the simple closures, but we'll show you some closures a little bit later where the buttons are very interestingly placed right along that same line, that one and a, excuse me, four and a half inch line. We place some buttonholes. I have some tape that spaces buttonholes that I like to use, but you can space them in the normal way if you'd like. Or consider some snaps. Snaps on the marking line. Notice we have a little pencil marking. This is a fabric pencil to give the guidelines for the various parts of the snap. Just snap them into place. This makes kind of an interesting casual look to your pillow, especially on this nice denim pillow. We have a contemporary closing and we'll flip it around to show you. Here we go. Where we have ties of cording or leather strips where we have one piece stitched to the overlap side and the second piece stitched to the underlay and tied in an interesting closure. So after you've sewn the closure of your choice, whether decorative or very functional, then meet right sides together of your pillow face and of your closure area. And now I'll show you how to sew a simple seam in the pillow. Remember, this series is called Pillows 101, so I'm really giving you the basics. And when working with the pillow, I like to stitch the, or stitch the top and the lower seams at first, and then do the side seams. I have the pins with the pin heads toward the cut edges so they can be removed easily. And we're going to use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances. The size of the pattern square allowed for that 5 eighths, a standard amount, 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters as it is on my machine. Stitch, lock the the seam and just quickly stitch the edge. Sewing perfectly straight is not necessary. Someone said to me the other day, I can't sew a straight seam. Not too many of us can. We just sew it, gu guiding it along the marking on the machine and it ends up pretty straight. That's about all you need. Sew off the edges, both again at the top and the bottom edge. Now we're going to wrap the corners. For those of you who have watched Sewing with Nancy before, we've done this a lot on collars and cuffs, but now we're going to do it too on pillows. And along the top and lower edge seams, we're going to wrap that seam allowance toward the pillow along the stitching line. The stitching line is the fold and pin. You do this on both sides and sew from fold to fold along each side of the pillow. This will shape those corners perfectly. You will not have to worry about rounded corners. They'll be shaped nicely. And you'll be surprised how easy this turns to make a completed pillow. Basically, the hard part about making the pillow, or not really hard, but the time-consuming part is doing the back area where you have the closure. Now, to show you how to do the pressing, I'm going to practice on this corner and show you that we're going to press the way it was stitched. Because the pillow is enclosed, hard to get the iron in the area, I'm going to show you this pressing technique that works great for home decorating. Press it the way this was stitched, along the fold line. Not with the seam allowance open, but flat. Then when doing the corner, again form it the way you would like it to be when it's finished. This is a lightweight fabric, so I haven't trimmed the bulk from the corners. I've just left it in there on this pillow. Notice how it's sharp on this side, pressed to the pillow on the other side. Now we'll turn this right side out. And you'll be amazed at how the pillow corners come out so neatly in this manner. 
I like to do one final pressing on the top to get everything nice and sharp, but turn all four corners, put in your pillow form, and you've made a basic pillow. Once you know the basics of creating a pillow, there are many interesting versions. I'd like to show you three of those to change the basic design. First is our window pillow, a perfect design for kids to put some memorabilia, gatherings from a vacation, however you'd like, in this little window section. It's a basic pillow with the addition, of course, of the clear vinyl. That's the key to making this. As I mentioned, we're going to be working with just rectangles or squares, in this instance, squares of fabric. But rather than giving you dimensions, here's an easy way of determining how to cut the various pieces for this great window pillow. Again, you're going to start off with a square, with the pillow form size plus an inch and a half. But this time, cut two pattern pieces that are square. One you're going to make the pillow from, in the same way I just detailed, and now this other section to be used for the window pieces. Fold that basic square in half, matching the cut edges and press or crease, and then fold again. This is going to be a pattern. This section that's a fourth of the size of the original square is going to be used to cut a layer for the top of the pillow. You have a cute little frisch print for this section. Then unfold this so that there are three sections left. Three-fourths of the size of the original square is going to be the size of the clear vinyl. You'll need about three-eighths of a yard or less, depending upon the pillow size, of the clear vinyl. These sections are going to be stitched right on top of the basic pillow form. Now let me show you, not pillow form, but pillow fabric. Let me show you how to create the top area. Now I'm working on a padded pressing surface. Don't press it just on your table, but on your ironing surface, press under about a fourth of an inch. You don't have to measure a fourth of an inch guideline, give or take, and a little bit will work just fine. Press under one long edge, meet the cut edges at the top, and then edge stitch along the fold. This takes a little bit more fabric, but it's certainly fast and an easy way to determine what size to make the pattern pieces. On the flip side, you see we have a double layer in this instance. So all you have to do is cut this away all the way across the top, kind of staggering the seam allowances so that they're not exactly the same length. Save this piece for perhaps another project. And you have the basic section for your fabric. Again, this was just edge stitched along the fold. Now for the vinyl. This is going to obviously be the pocket section, the window section. We have a zipper that's much longer than needed. This is 15 and a half inch square. This zipper was about 22 inches. On the wrong side of the zipper, I have some basting tape. This is a double adhesive tape that's placed on the lower half of the zipper. And I'm going to overlap this so that the vinyl is caught underneath the zipper with this tape. It's hard to pin vinyl, so we'll just pin it with the use of tape. And then after pinning it, you can stitch along the edge, top stitch in place. We've used a contrasting thread on this pocket section so that you can see how they're just top stitched, very simply in place. Now at the end, of the zipper. We have more length than needed. I've sewn over the closed zipper and then just cut it off. Zippers are easy to sew through. They're not metal they, like they used to be, so you can simply do that and it will be, work out just fine. Now, to finish this window section, just overlap the clear vinyl on the lower half or lower three-fourths of the pocket, pocket section and edge stitch again along the top. You could use basting tape if you wanted to position the zipper or just pin it. And you have the basic portion of the window of the pillow finished. As you can see, this makes a quick little gift idea as well as a great accessory for any room. And all made using the basic techniques plus adding the vinyl and a little extra fabric at the top. You can see working with pillows is a great way to learn to sew but a great way to express your creativity. Later in this series, I'll show you a safari setting with pillows that go with that type of decor. This is one of those pillows. And we have what I call an exposed cording with little tabs of fabric along the edges and then the jute cording being strung throughout the area. It's kind of a fun treatment. Just to show you on the wrong side, we have 
some buttons across the closure with some unique shapes to add to the character of the pillow. To work with this, you're going to cut the pattern out in the same way I told you earlier. This time, you're just going to be adding some tabs to the top pillow, the continuous square fa uh, fabric. We've used leather or leather-like fabrics here, and I'll show you fabric or the leather both ways. The interesting thing of working with a leather-like fabric or a suede-like fabric is that you don't have to finish the edges. These are raw cut edges. The strip is one inch by three inch and I folded meeting the wrong sides together and then would simply pin those cut edges to the cut edge of the fabric and space these however you'd like around the edges of the pocket, not pocket, excuse me, of the pillow. Then you would meet the closure side just the way I told you earlier and sew along the edge and after sewing you'll have, and turning it right side out, you'll have these little tabs extending. Now if you don't have leather, let me just show you another option cut fabric that's about two inches wide and with the fabric fold the ends to the middle and press. It doesn't have to be exactly one inch, just make it however you'd like the width of the tab to be. On this sample, after the ends were pressed to the middle, then I simply edge stitched, used a contrasting thread so that you could see, but you could edge stitch to hold the fabric in place. Again, cut this one by three and pin around the edges. Let's refer quickly back to the finished pillow. But you can see that the cording, you could buy jute or trimming, but simply flows through these tabs. We tied the ends to give it a little extra character. And it's an interesting way of creating with sewing. We checked a lot of boutiques, expensive catalog, home decorating catalogs for doing this series to look at various pillow designs. And in our southwest grouping, you'll see this pillow featured with fringe and then what I call top weaving. We really went all out by weaving very close together on this particular pillow. You could have weaving that's close, further apart with wider strips. Remember, you're the creator, so you can make it however you'd like, but basically the guidelines follow these steps. Again, cut out the pattern according to the basic guidelines. Cutting that square plus an inch and a half and making a top piece and then the closure sections. On the top piece, we have fourth of an inch strips of trim, or these happen to be leather-like strips cut about five inches long. And notice we tied little knots at the end, just for, interesting, just for an interesting look. You could pin these an inch apart, an inch and a half. The choice is yours, but just kind of make them equidistant. After pinning them around the edge, you may want to base these all the way around, then sew the basic pillow. And this shows the basic pillow in process. When you turn it right side out, you'll have these fringes that will extend out of the seam. To weave this, we're simply going to tie a longer strip, I've already started to tie, a longer strip to one of the fringe ends, wrap it or extend it across the top, and then wrap it on the other side. It takes a little time to do the wrapping, do a hand, overhand knot. Then to complete this, after you have all one direction in place, bring a tied end from the opposite direction and weave over and under. Just like those little pot holders that some of us made as kids. And just keep weaving. After you're complete, you'll find that you'll have an interesting design just by using some creativity and some scraps of trim or leather. In this first program of Pillows 101, I gave you the basics of sewing and creating pillows. The closure section of the basic pillow can be either functional or decorative, and keep that in mind when sewing this. The window pillow has this easy but functional Velcro hook and loop tape closure on the back. But the safari type pillow that has the cording, we used it as well as functional but made it decorative with these interesting buttons. So in working with pillows, it's fun to be creative. I hope you've enjoyed it. Ginger Incorporated, the manufacturer of the finest quality scissors and shears, has been a sponsor of Sewing with Nancy for more than 10 years. Each article in their complete assortment is manufactured with care and attention to detail, whether cutting, nipping, pinking, clipping, or trimming. There is a Ginger product designed for that job. 
join me in thanking Ginger Incorporated for their dedicated sponsorship. New from Oxmoor House, the Sew for Fun collection, so easy, so now. Quick ways to sew gifts, accessories, clothing, and more. Order now. You'll receive free seven project cards, a pattern sheet, binder, and dividers, and my new monthly newsletter. You'll also receive more project cards to preview for 30 days. No obligation. If you decide to keep them, we'll bill you only $5.98 plus shipping and handling. Then about once a month, you'll receive two new sets of projects and my free newsletter at the same low price. Keep only shipments you want. Cancel anytime. Call 1-800-765-6400 and so easy, so now. Welcome, I'm Nancy Zeman. Today on Sewing with Nancy, I'm continuing with my three-part series on Pillows 101. We designed this series for those of you who would like to get into sewing but just don't know where to start. I feel that pillows are the perfect beginner course. For those of you who already know the basics, I promise interesting ideas to inspire you as well. Let's start by viewing a group of pillows that take on the look of the Southwest. The rich, earthy colors that are featured in textured fabrics add warmth to a casual room setting. This grouping features a variety of pillow styles, including the super simple flange pillows. These attractive pillows will be the first on a lesson plan for this class of Sewing with Nancy, Pillows 101. There are a variety of types of flange pillows. Flange simply meaning an extension added to the pillow to give some style to the pillow. The single flange is in this corduroy design where we simply have an extension on one end and the closure is with buttons, kind of trendy and fun for our country look. The double flange is very popular right now with extensions on either side of the pillow. It not, does not have buttonholes. The buttons are just on there for a little ornamentation. Easy to put together. The simplest of all pillows is made out of suede. This is a synthetic suede, easy to work with, fast. It has a full flange, extensions on all sides. Or if you could do the same extension on fabric, traditional fabric. I'll show you now how to work with the basic pattern and to add extensions, make a little bit different sizes so you can have a single, double, or a full flange pillow. First of all, the single. In the first program of the series, I detailed working with a basic pattern measuring or using the size of the pillow form and adding an inch and a half. And that's what we're going to do here. Start with a pillow form plus an inch and a half for your size. So no matter what pillow form you're working with, this is the measurement that you would make a square of paper. For the single flange, you're going to add an extension on one side, four and a half inches. Actually, it's the same extension we used for that basic pattern. And this is added to one side, four and a half inches. There's a nip or a marking at three inches. We're going to nip the fabric through all layers through this area. So you're going to cut two layers of fabric from this pattern size, this larger pattern size. On the pattern pieces that I have to show you, we have some markings and some sewing already completed on these, following much what we did earlier, but just a quick review. The nips on the sides are three inches from the edge. The nip is right in this area. Cut a strip of fusible interfacing that three inch width times the length, the short end of your pillow. And fuse on both sides, fusing the interfacing to the cut edge. This particular piece has already been sewn, at least the side seams. I've sewn with a five eighths of an inch seam alone. So that's what all the pillow form or the pattern size is a call for in the measurements I'm giving you. The standard 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters. Stitch the length. Then at the corners, at the lower edge, I have wrapped the seam allowance to the pillow, folding it right along the stitching line. And then stitch that corner into place, called a wrap corner, works so well. And then what I like to do when working with these wrap corners is to press from the wrong side along the stitching line so it's crisp. It will make it easier to turn it right side out. So this is the way you finish three of the four size, sides of this pillow. It's kind of like a giant pillowcase. A way that you can finish this top edge, if it happens to be ravel prone, I have kind of two ideas to show you. This is paperback fusible web that was cut a half of an inch wide. Peel it off after you've pressed down one layer and then fold it in half so that you're just folding under a fourth of an inch. And let me give that a quick press. You don't have to do stitching, just a quick fusing. 
and you'll have a nice clean finished edge. And you would do this all the way around the circumference of that open edge. Another option is to stitch a presser foot width away. As you can see, maybe the dark stitching on the interfacing, a fourth of an inch or presser foot width away from the cut edge, fold along that stitching line, and then stitch from the fold just to give a nice clean finished edge. And here it is clean finished, which you do all the way around. Those nips, those three inch nip markings are so crucial. They gave the guideline for the interfacing, but also they'll serve as the guideline for turning under the hem. Turn under the hem and press all the way around and then turn right side out. Our finished sample shows when you turn it right side out what's left to do. And that is to attach buttons and buttonholes or to sew them into place. I like to have the starting point of the buttonhole two inches from the fold. That will give us that two inch flange or extension. And place the buttonholes, in this instance vertically, stitching them downward. And they will have enough interfacing lower in the facing to have support for these buttonholes. Sew on the buttons on the underlay side and presto, a fun fast pillow to add as a great accent, great country look in this corduroy. Now the double flange pillow has a little bit of a different style to it. Extensions on both sides, if you might guess, we're going to work with that basic square shape, add some extensions, and do a little bit of sewing. Very comparable sewing techniques as the single flanged area. The pillow form size plus an inch and a half with the extensions on both sides, both on the left side and the right side, and that they're the same extension, four and a half inches. Cut two layers of this and also do the nippings, the nippings at three inches from the cut edges on both the top layer and the bottom layer of each of your pillows. This sewing will be more like sewing it into a tube, sewing the fabrics in the tube. We have placed interfacing already, three inch strip of fusible interfacing on either side of the pillow sections. You can see on both sides you have the, the interfacing all the way around. Press the seam allowances open and then turn under at that three inch nip marking your hem or your facing amount. This will give the amount for the flange. So this is being turned under by three inches on both sides. I've pre-pressed this already so it should turn a little bit easier. You'll have to take some time to measure as you're pressing so that it, it is always three inches all the way around this pillow. So now we have one big cylinder that we're going to turn right side out. This is a little simpler in sewing because you don't have to sew on buttonholes on this one. You wouldn't on the other one either. I'll give you some options. Here we'll get the cylinder turned. There we are. And now meet the cut edges of one end so that these folded areas are meeting and pin. Stitch two inches from the folded edge. Insert your pillow then we're going to sew this pillow closed by matching the other ends. Again, pinning so that these edges align perfectly. Now stitch again two inches from the end. Sometimes a little hard to stitch when the pillow is inside. Here you can see that I'm stitching two inches from the fold using a zipper foot on my machine. It just makes it easier because the foot does not have an appendage or it's extension on the left side, so this will work out very well. Add the buttons for a little ornamentation if you'd like, or just use it as is and you have a double flange pillow. I mentioned earlier about working with the full flange. This is with synthetic suede. A half a yard of suede makes about a $20 pillow, beautiful rich pillow that in ready to wear or retail you'd probably pay about $60 for. We're going to use the pillow form plus four inches as the guideline. And when cutting this, since it doesn't ravel, we can cut two layers and then mark, again, two inches from the fold. We have wrong sides together. Mark two inches from the cut edge, I should say, not fold, all the way around. So three of the four sides. It's already been stitched. Stuff the pillow and then sew the remaining side of this area. We've added some embellishments, as you can see in this area, or in this pillow, by after stitching, right next to the stitching line, punch with a keyhole, buttonhole, 
punch about every one inch. Using some cording or strips of leather or suede, weave in and out for a nice ornamental look. As you can see, making a flange pillow is easy sewing with great results. I hope you'll give it a try. The clean look of natural colored fabric and the simple lines of the pillows can enhance any contemporary room setting. This collection of pillows features an interesting combination of pillow styles, including basic, flanged, and envelope. The focal point of the arrangement is the graceful tied pillow. It's an interesting variation of the envelope pillow. Next, I'd like to show you how easy it is to create this and other envelope variations. As you might guess, when working with pillows, we're going to use the same squares and rectangles, this time triangles, to create interesting envelope pillows. This is a traditional fabric pillow. It could also serve to hold pajamas in a kid's room. We've left the end open. Or if you would like to create an envelope pillow from fabric that doesn't ravel, you have some other variations, such as polar fleece or synthetic suede, make really interesting pillows that can be sewn with just two side seams. First of all, the traditional fabric pillow to make an envelope style. You're going to cut two, two now, squares of paper that are the pillow form size plus an inch and a half. Out of one of the pillow form, one of the patterns, excuse me, sizes, you're going to cut two layers of fabric and sew three of the four edges together and turn right side out. This edge is open. We use the wrap corner methods in, in each corner, but we just have one big pillow right now with the end open. For the envelope section, this is what's kind of fun because you'll take the second square that's cut the same size as the original pattern piece, fold it in half diagonally, corner to corner, opposite corners, I should say, to opposite corners, and then into a smaller triangle. Out of this shape, you're going to cut two layers of fabric for the flap of the envelope pillow. I've used the same wrap corner treatment that we, I've used throughout this series by stitching in this time, I have a little narrower seam. I have a fourth of an inch seam. Somehow, by folding the paper smaller, we, use a we lose a little length. So use a fourth of an inch seam on this accent piece. Wrap the corner, and then stitch the other side of the flap. Turn it right side out. Now it's time to meet the flap to the pillow. And you're going to meet the flap to one side of the pillow, and stitch it into place, meeting the cut edges with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, sewing all the way around. This is going to be a pajama bag for my little boy. And I like to stitch that 5 eighths of an inch even on the side that doesn't have the flap. This will give me, the stitching line will give me a press mark where to fold it under. Now to keep these raw edges from raveling, since this is going to be an open pillow for pajamas, I would like you to think about turning under the edges and stitching, or if you have a serger, to serge the edges or zigzag the edges to keep them from being raveled edges. If you're going to insert a pillow and use it as a pillow, then simply meet these cut edges together and hand stitch after the form has been inserted. It's a fun, fast little creation that you can just add a button if you'd like or leave it plain. The choice is yours. Now for the unique way of making an envelope pillow with fabric that doesn't ravel. As I mentioned, suedes are so popular for home decorating, as well as felts or fleeces. I have three, this time, squares cut to the size of the pillow form. I'm going to be working with an 18-inch pillow form. So I have two complete squares that I would butt. They're 18 inches, butt together. No seam allowances allowed here. And then the third square is folded again down to that right triangle, that small triangle, end to end, side to side. And you place it at one end, just tape it together. This is one long piece. Now when working with the fleece, you simply are going to cut it, or this is a polar fleece, the part that doesn't ravel, the same size as these tape patterns. I obviously didn't have them taped together. And move them together like this, and it's one long piece really fast and fun to do. These edges do not ravel, so we don't have to worry about finishing them. We don't have to worry about wear. And now simply wrap with right sides meeting the cut edges until the flap section of the envelope. And then you would stitch with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, a narrow little seam allowance along this edge, just a presser foot width. 
there's your envelope out of fabric. We did some little extra embellishments on ours. We added a blanket stitch using silk floss, some hand stitching around the edges, added a button, but didn't want to put a buttonhole in this fabric, so just used some hook and loop tape. When working with suede, again, kind of an expensive fabric, but great for home decorating. It's a $20 pillow. We shaped the edge rather than the shape of an envelope, shaped it like raw leather to give it a more natural look. I hope you'll try these. Our next pillow is an envelope pillow, but with extended flaps, two flaps to be exact. The flaps will be making quite, are quite longer that sewn one to either end of this pillow and tied in the middle. The basic pillow is just that. It's made like a basic pillow that we did in the first program of this series with a solid piece of fabric on the top and on the flip side we have the closure area. We chose buttons that were kind of elegant just like the fabric. For the tie-in pillow, you'll need fabric that is lightweight, not a cor corduroy windwork or a heavyweight tapestry, something lightweight and flowing. You can make or cut out the patterns for your basic pattern piece, for your basic pillow, and out of the second square, you're going to make a grid. It's kind of unusual, but we're going to fold the pattern in half and fold it in half again, meeting the cut edges. Increase. Try to be accurate during your folding. Unfold it. Then fold in the opposite direction creating the creases. We're making a grid of this, of this tissue paper. I have about 16 grids when I unfold this. This, is, this technique is used so that you do not have to worry about measurements. You can just work with a basic square. To get the tie shapes, I have a layer of tissue paper folded in half and notice that I have one vertical line drawn next, creating an angle. The width of this pattern piece for the tie is going to be three grids. Place a little mark. The width in this instance is going to be one and a half pillows. So here I have one pillow and I'll place a little mark. Move it over, two grids, and there we go. This is so much faster than actually trying to work with measurements, just using the grid system. Now I'm going to draw a line connecting these two. And what I worked with on the basic pillow, just to give this line just a little curve, just so it was somewhat graceful. You could use a French curve if you'd like, or what I'm doing right now, just eyeball it, just so it had a nice graceful curve. And cut out along the outer lines. Underneath, we have it cut out. And when you open this up, you have your pattern piece for your flaps. You're going to cut four of these. As we did for the envelope flap a little bit earlier, we sewed two of the sides together. We're going to create two of these, meeting right sides together, turn right side out, and you have your flap. Notice we used about a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This unfinished edge needs to be gathered, so you'll need to get some cording, and for beginners, this is the way I'd like to gather, place cording on the raw edge, and as you can see at the machine, I'm zigzagging over the cord. After anchoring one end of the cord, then you can gather. Here on this pillow, we have one of the flaps in place. I anchored the cording, wrapped it around the pin, and started 5 eighths of an inch from the edge, the seam allowance width, gathered it to meet one edge. With the second flap, place it on the opposite end. And then sew your pillow in the traditional manner. When it's turned right side out, tie a knot, and you have an elegant design. In this program, I detailed working with the envelope and flange pillows. The last pillow was the suede pillow, ultra suede pillow, made with a full flange. After stitching around the edges, we did the punching about every inch to weave in and out some trim. Another option would be to make the pillow in the same manner, but place the holes about two inches apart and weave the trim through the openings like a blanket stitch. It's a nice creative alternative. Next on Pillows 101, I'll show you how to make a bolster as well as a pillow wrap. Did you know that almost 70% of professional embroideries use one particular brand of thread? That thread is Madeira. Now, the full line of German-made Madeira threads is available to home sewers as well as professionals. Today's sophisticated home sewing machines demand quality threads. When you use
use Madeira threads on your machines, they will stitch better and your finished products will look more professional. Madeira produces threads and flosses in hundreds of colors for machine, serger, and hand embroidery. Embroiderers prefer Madeira because of its tensile strength and color fastness. I use Madeira and I'm genuinely impressed by its consistent quality. You'll love it too. I would like to talk about one of the fine underwriters of Sewing with Nancy. I'm sure you've noticed I use Pfaff sewing machines and sergers exclusively on my television show and videotapes, and there's a good reason for it. Pfaff machines provide the reliable performance I need, and they're very easy to use. What's more, Pfaff stitch quality is exceptional. So whether I'm using a Pfaff creative model for elaborate fashion sewing or a high-tech serger for home deck work, I know I can count on my Pfaff to help me do my very best sewing every time, and so can you. Your local Pfaff dealer is there to help and can show you the entire Pfaff line. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nancy Zeman. This program of Sewing with Nancy is the final part of my three-part beginner sewing course called Pillows 101. In my opinion, pillows are the perfect project for novice sewers. Throughout this series, I've been showing you decorating themes and pillows that can quickly and creatively be made with just a few sewing skills. This pillow theme we call Classic Country. There's a sampling of the basic, envelope, flanged, wrapped, and bolster pillows in this grouping. Let's start off with the interesting wrap pillow. You can add special accents, like this moose motif, over any basic pillow, or dress your pillow for special holidays with a simple wrap of fabric. So get out your tablet and a pen. It's time to start the class of Pillows 101, next on Sewing with Nancy. To change the look of your room with a pillow wrap, you're going to use some very basic dimensions and sewing skills. This wrap, of course, just is a wrap of fabric around an existing pillow, or you can make it more complicated. Regardless, you have some of the same elements, fabric wrapped around the edge, and then it tied at the sides, as well as the overlap. And here's how to make the pattern piece. Throughout this series, I've been using just basic squares and rectangles of patterns, or paper, to make the pattern. I've cut two squares the size of the pillow form. So if it's an 18-inch pillow form, you have two 18-inch squares and butt them together. And then add a 5-inch section so that the length is double the pillow form plus 5 inches and the width is the finished size of the pillow form. We're not going to have an overlap. It's just going to be a little bit smaller when it's finished than the actual covered pillow. So you have one long rectangle of fabric. For an 18-inch pillow form or less, you'll need a half of a yard. And for a 20-inch pillow form or more, take the pillow form size and double it. And that's the amount of fabric you'll need if you're buying 45-inch fabric. Finishing the edges is the first sewing step, pretty easy sewing steps to create this. There are two, I have two alternatives for you. If you have a zigzag or serger, serge the edges all the edges of your re long rectangle and then press under, first of all, on the short ends, a half of an inch. And after pressing, then just edge stitch around the edges. If you do not have a serger or a zigzag on your machine or another way of clean finishing the edges as an alternative is to press under a fourth of an inch and then another fourth of an inch or a narrow seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exactly a fourth of an inch. And then again, stitch. This way of finishing both the short ends and then the long ends will give you nice mitered corners. And you don't have to worry about special sewing. Just by doing this turning under will work out just great. So choose one of those methods. After you have that big rectangle of fabric finished, then we'll work with some ties, because this is just going to wrap right on the edge. These ties are simply cuts of suede. You could use trim, make bias tape, fabric tubes, whatever you'd like. This happens to be a half of an inch wide by eight inches. The trim could be eight inches long. Eight inches works quite well. And they're going to be at first sewn to the short ends. I had this pinned on my particular pillow, just pillow wrap. Fold in half to find the center mark. And then from the wrong side, pin. And then stitch in place. If the edges were raw or cut, then you'd maybe finish those by zigzagging. You'd have one tie on the short end. On the opposite end, I've already have it pinned in place. I found the center, but then measured up four inches, four inches from the center. The wrap is almost complete. Now you'd have a pillow form that was covered. I'm just working with a basic uncovered pillow form right here and just wrap it around to determine where you would like the overlap. 
On this particular pillow form, right now I have it kind of offset. If you'd like it right at the edge of the pillow, reposition it so that it comes closer to the edge. Then you'll need to determine where you'd like the side wraps. And I usually divide this so I have side wraps and ties, maybe the word ties is better, so that they're positioned equally between the openings. And sew those into place. So you'll need 10 ties or 10 lengths that are 8 inches long and just sew those into place. And your basic wrap is complete. So you could use a holiday print, a special festivity print, whatever you'd like to change the look of the pillow. But now you can add some special embellishments if you'd like. We have two other options for pillows. You saw this earlier in our classic country grouping. And we're, we've included this design for this moose motif in the booklet that accompanies today's program. The reason I'd like to show this is because the felt that this has been made of is a perfect fabric to use for a motif for an applique if you're a beginner sewer. Now, for those of you who know, who have been sewing for a while, you may want to try some other fabrics. But if you'd like to, for the first time, try applique, a non-raveling fabric works just great. We wouldn't, wouldn't have to do any additional sewing if you don't care to. You can just fuse it into place. This is the design. And whatever design you choose, basically you're going to get a mirror image of the design on your pillow. What's at the right is going to be at the left when you're finished and vice versa. Because we're going to be tracing the pattern idea or the design onto paper-backed fusible web. This has a paper backing and then web. If you can see the kind of the shine is on the reverse side. And I've separated this corner to show you that this is the fusible that would bond fabric to fabric. If you don't care to sew, do the sewing, get the no-sew fusible web. It has a red mark on the paper. The type that you'd sew through has a light lavender mark. So obviously I've chosen in this instance the thicker weight if I'm not going to sew through it. The first step is to trace the design on your paper. Trace over what section you'd like and roughly cut out the design, leaving not leaving some fusible web around the edges. Then fuse this to the wrong side of your fabric. With felt, it really doesn't matter. It can be practically any position because, right or wrong side I'm saying, because it's a reversible fabric and just press according to the manufacturer's instructions. I'm pressing on a padded surface. You would press on your ironing board. And then after pressing, cut out following the design. So ta this takes a little while. This our friend the moose here is a little detailed but interesting. Cut around, out around the edges and after cutting, remove the paper backing. And he's ready to fuse into place. You can see the shininess on the wrong side. And you place it onto your fabric, your other form, whatever you'd like. Now we used on the top section when pressing into place the no sew area, but if you've used the type that you'd like to sew around the edges, you can see that we've done a blanket stitch around this area. The blanket stitch is a setting on many machines, and here you can see that I'm stitching around the edges with the zig going into the fabric and the zag going, or the straight stitch going around the edge. It's just kind of a decorative country look to finish the edge. So that's one element, just adding an applique in the overlap section of your pillow wrap. Now another idea is just to do some piecing. You'll see this pillow in the next segment when we do the safari looking room decor. And rather than just using fabric in one long rectangle, we did some piecing. Cutting strips the width of the pillow and then a various lengths. There's also a little piping in between the layers. The piping is cordless. We're not going to use piping for a beginner class, but we have a two inch wide strip of piping and we'd fold it meeting the wrong sides. And then place this on the right side of the fabric strip. When sewing, we just simply meet different strips together so that this is sandwiched between the layers. Let me show you this on the underneath sample. We simply sandwiched all these layers together stitched, and when we opened the seam, we had a nice piping accent. Add strips until you get the correct length that you need for your pillow wrap. The edges of this pillow wrap are finished kind of using the same technique. You could turn under the edges if you'd like. 
but instead we use this same two inch strip of fabric, met it to the right sides of the pillow wrap, stitched about a presser foot width away, and then wrapped the trim to the wrong side. From the right side with the sewing machine, stitch in the ditch, stitch in the groove of the seam to attach it to the edge. Put on the wraps and presto, you have an interesting look for a fabric wrap. The next pillow grouping was influenced by captivating safari-like fabric prints. The sewing is simple, the creating fun, and the end result adds drama. Like the other groupings I've shown you before, this collection features a variety of easy-to-create pillows. The bolster pillow is next. The shape is slightly different and doesn't use a basic pillow form, giving you more flexibility in your pillow design. Here's how. I'm going to be showing you four different types of bolster pillows, starting with the easiest first. From our classic country collection, I've used a polar fleece to create a pillow. This fabric doesn't ravel, as I, shown, as I showed you in a second program of this series, and you can cut a 24 by 36 inch rectangle of fabric to create a fun pillow. This is the right side of the polar fleece. So I'm simply now just going to meet the long edges together with right sides meeting and stitch with a fourth of an inch seam along this long edge. Now you can just use your presser foot width. It doesn't have to be exactly a fourth of an inch for this type of sewing. And then turn it right side out. That's basically all the sewing that you'll need. You'll need to cut your own pillow form. And to do this, since you're not going to be working with the purchase forms, you'll work with quilt batting. I cut this quilt batting 18 inches wide, a long strip, and then simply roll it until you get the right circumference or the dimension for your bolster. So I would need a little bit more for my bolster pillow than this is giving me right here, but you get the idea of cutting 18 inches and just roll until you get the right size. Insert it into the pillow, and then you can do some finishing at the edges. Since this fabric doesn't ravel, you could just leave the edges unfinished if you'd like. We added a little extra t technique on this end using the blanket stitch, hand blanket stitch, to give it that kind of interesting homespun country look. I'll show you the technique of working with the blanket stitch. We were using embroidery floss, and on computer bar paper, frequently you'll have the little perforated holes. A viewer sent this hint a long time ago that if you cut off the holes along computer bar paper, attach it to or pin it to the edge of your fabric where you'd like to do the blanket stitching, you have perfect areas in which to judge how to get the distance between the blanket stitches. And then when you're finished, just simply tear away the paper. And you can take it off and you have even stitching, a fun little accent to add. To finish this, we just made some fabric ties. The finished ties were th are three inches by about 36. Again, you can make these any size you'd like and tie the ends. And voila, a great bolster pillow made out of polar fleece. Sometimes fabric is the inspiration for a lot of my sewing. And in this instance, in our sewing room, we found this beautiful fabric, obviously sky, wa sky to water. And that was our inspiration for this kid's supersized bolster pillow. Two rectangles were cut, 30 by 45. And you can see we have some seaming right in this area is where the two were seamed together to make the supersized bolster pillow. Unlike the other pillow where the edges don't need to be finished, we need some finishing edges in this instance. And so on either end, we turned under about six inches of fabric and then straight stitched the turned under edge because otherwise this fabric would ravel. With the cording or with fabric ties, tie the end closed. This time you'd need a little bit larger, obviously, batting to put inside, but this is a fun pillow to make, and you can see with the fabric it really made was the inspiration for it. Now for the traditional type of bolster pillow. I have two examples from the contemporary grouping and also the safari-like, which you just saw. Both of these pillows were made from the same pattern pieces, which is interesting because they look so very different. This pattern piece in the contemporary setting has a fabric accent that's finished with about three inches. This fabric accent has the cordless piping inserted, so it's a little bit narrower piece. Regardless, both of these were sewn in the same manner, and I'd like to show you that right now. 
We're going to cut two main pattern pieces for this. The main body is 18 by 24 inches, 18 by 24. You'll need about two thirds of a yard of fabric to create one bolster pillow. And then the second pattern piece is six by 24. Out of this piece, you'll be cutting two layers of the fashion fabric and two layers of the accent fabric for that little extra flange that you saw on the pillow. So four layers from this piece, one from the main body piece. Here's how to put these pattern pieces together. From the main pattern piece, the main piece for the bolster pillow, rather than meeting the long edges, meet the short edges together. And I'm working with a tapestry fabric that ravels easily. And stitch this, the short edges with the standard seam, press it, and turn it right side out. Now because this fabric is relatively reversible, or is reversible in looks, we used the right side for the main body, and the wrong side we're going to use for those fabric accents, or you could cut it out of another piece of fabric as well. Now I have a fabric accent pinned to one end of the bolster. To create those accents with two of the pieces of the, of the 6 by 24 inch, meet the short edges, finger press or press, and then turn so that the correct side is exposed, and meet all the raw edges. Pin this piece to the bolster end, and you might notice that we have the seam allowances stacked, one on top of each other, so that they're all aligned. And so we have an, still a circle. This is where we have that little accent. Now to create the part that comes together it's for the bolster end, we're going to use two more of the 6 by 24 inch pieces. Again, sew the short ends. But rather than sewing the whole seam, I have a pin marked at an inch and a half. This is an inch and a half from the edge. Stop sewing at that point. Bar tack or secure that stitching. stitching excuse me. See these seam allowances? They're really flat. I used a little scrap of the paper-backed fusible web left over from my applique that I showed you earlier and fused down those seams. You'll see why we need those fused into place. This opening is going to be used as a casing for the cording to go through. Either surge the edge, zigzag the edge, or turn it under, and then after turning that edge under or clean finishing it, press under about a half of an inch to five eighths. And then sew around the edge. On this side we have it sewn. This will give us the opening of which to insert the cording. And the cording can be inserted with a botkin or a double-eyed needle, however you'd like. Just insert it through the middle and draw it all the way around. Now with right sides meeting, we're going to attach this piece to the bolster end. And you'll repeat this on the opposite end of the bolster. Again, stacking the seam allowances. So we have the bolster end, the insert, and the main body. And so in a circumference, attaching all these layers. When you turn it right side out, then you can cut a quilt batting the appropriate size and roll it up. Now what we found with this tapestry fabric, it was a little bulky, so we weren't able to get a good closure, just something we learned in the process, so we tied the end. But on our safari print, we were able to get a very nice tie by just threading the cording through the end, and you can see here's the little casing that was created. Another little addition, rather than using that six inch strip to be used as a fabric accent on this bolster, we cut a two inch strip to just use as a cordless, or cordless piping as I showed you earlier on that wrap pillow. It kind of coincided or matched that other wrap pillow I showed you earlier. So with both the safari style or the contemporary style, we started with the 18 by 24 inch piece. The six by 24 inch ends became the closure to the bolster pillow. And with some simple sewing and stacking, you have a great addition to your home. It's time to wrap up this three-part series on Pillows 101. As you can see, you can learn to sew by sewing pillows. The sewing is simple, but the ideas and the look is really versatile. If you're a beginner, you can start with a basic pillow, then expand to perhaps an envelope flanged, bolster even wrap pillow. If you've been sewing for a while, try some of the accent ideas that I gave you, like working with a wrap pillow with an applique accent or a special bolster pillow. I hope you've enjoyed this series. 
Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Sewing with Nancy has been brought to you in part by FAF, simply the best European line of sewing machines. Ginger, a tradition of quality in scissors and shears. Oxmoor House, publishers of sewing, quilting, and craft books. Madeira Threads, designed for home and professional embroiderers everywhere. And by Nancy's Notions Sewing Catalog, featuring specialty sewing books and notions.